Hi, my name's Dan, and in this video I'm going to take you through common maintenance operations for when running Bookstack using the Linux server Docker image. Now I'm going to run through a whole range of different operations, including updating your instance, backing up and restoring. But before I jump into those, I'm just going to give you an overview of my environment, just so that you're aware of things that might be different compared to your own environment. But as it stands, all that I've really done is that I've taken the Docker Compose configuration provided in the uh, documentation for Linux server Docker image here. I've just taken that and then made a few changes. One thing that I've done is that I fixed the version of the Docker Bookstack image being used here to an older version so that I can show the updating process. I've also set the app URL that I intend to use, which is just on my local host, so locally on my computer. And I've set a sensible password for both the database user, so that correlates with this value down here. And then I've also set a MySQL root password. And then for both the Bookstack container and the database container that's part of this Docker Compose stack, I have mapped some volumes that are local to this Compose file. So for the Bookstack container, I have the config directory mounted to the local app data folder, which we can see here in my sidebar. And then similar for the database, I've got that in a DB data folder going to the slash config directory within the container. And therefore I have that data within this folder here. So it's a very simple setup and I've got this running. So if I jump into the browser, I can go into my instance here and it's all live and active and I've created a book. And then within that book, I've created a page and I've uploaded an image and attached a file. And I've done this just to ensure that we've got some content in the system so we can make sure that it's still there and everything's working as we expected as we do the different operations. So one other thing about my environment to know is that I'm running Docker Compose via the kind of new command system where Compose is built into Docker. So I run it as like Docker Compose and let's just do like PS to see the running containers. Whereas uh, quite typically in the past, it's been Docker hyphen compose like this. And either of those options should work fine. Just adapt them as needed, but I'm gonna be generally using that new syntax of Docker space compose. And on that note, I am gonna be using Docker compose a lot throughout this video, but a lot of the commands follow base Docker commands. So if you're not using compose and using straight up Docker on the command line or something similar, then a lot of them have the same terminology. So you might just have to adapt those a little bit. Okay, the first thing that I wanna cover is running commands. Now, Bookstack has a whole bunch of commands built in as shown in this documentation page. And these are used for a variety of admin level things such as cleaning up old images, deleting users, resetting multi-factor authentication, creating admin users. So if we use one of these as an example, so let's have a look at the create an admin user command. Like all of the commands, they all start with this kind of PHP artisan Bookstack and then something after that. But because we're running a container-based environment, we don't have access to PHP directly, at least not maybe the right version. We don't have direct access to this artisan file either. So I'm gonna show you the process of going into the container and gaining access so you could run multiple commands in succession if you really wanted to. So let's do that. I'm gonna copy this for later use. Then I'm gonna to jump to my command line. I'm gonna run docker space compose and then exec to run a command against a container. And then the name of one of the services within our docker compose file. In this case, it would just be bookstack. So if I have a look, and then we're basically using that name there. So we're gonna exec against bookstack, and then we're gonna do bin slash bash. So slash bin slash bash. And that gets us a bash shell within the docker container. So right now we're within the root directory of the docking container. So we need to change directory to slash app slash www like that. And if we run ls, the list that was here, then we've got all these files here, which reflect all of the top level files for a bookstack install, including this artisan file. So because we can see that, we can now run artisan commands. So if I paste in what I had earlier, that php artisan bookstack create admin command, and I'll hit enter, and then we're running it. So Bookstack's going to ask us the email for a new admin. Barry at example.com. Barry. Password. Let's see. Cool. And now I've created a new admin by running that command. So because I'm here within the bash shell, I can do other things within this container as well. So if, for example, if I wanted to know the PHP version in use, it could be PHP-B. I can see it's using PHP 8.0.25 right now. So yeah, it can be really useful if you need to get inside the container. That's basically how you do it. And then once you want to exit out, you can just run exit on the command line. 
or you can also use control D a lot of the time and that will excel as well. The next thing I want to talk about is environment variables. So within our Docker Compose setup, we've got some environment variables here that are being passed through to the Bookstack setup. And it's absolutely fine to define options like this. But there's a few disadvantages. One being that if you have loads and loads of options here, it's going to mess up your Docker Compose setup and you might prefer to have these elsewhere. And two, whenever you make changes to these, for them to take place, you have to bring down your Docker Compose stack and then bring it back up, or at least you need to do that for that container instance for the changes to take place, which might be a bit tricky if you're trying to configure something like an authentication method where you need to try different variations in some of these options that we have. And also the Bookstack documentation itself will make reference to a .env file since that's what's typically used to configure Bookstack. And we do have access to that, and that's what we can use as an alternate way to define options. So within our app data folder, which is what we have mapped to the slash config directory. So if you called it something different or have this located elsewhere, you'll have to find that. But within that directory that you've mapped to slash config, if we go into there, and then under www, you'll see a .env. If we open that up, then you'll see a lot of those settings from that we have configured in the environment, but this is part of our .env file. Now, in terms of how these two different ways interplay, the environment variables here will override the .env values here, but be a bit careful when it comes to the database values, because the Linux server kind of script and startup system does something special with these values, and you can see they're named differently. So I've got db user and db pass, whereas in here I've got db username and db password. So if you do start using the .env file and you need to make changes to the database details, I would probably do it in both locations just to be safe. So if I need to update my database password, I'd update this value here. And then I'd also update this value here just to make sure they're aligned. But just as an example of setting a value within here, if I jump back to my Bookstack instance and I'll log out so we can see the login screen. So this is just the normal email and password login. If we change to a different method of authentication, which is done by the auth underscore me method variable, and we can set this to OIDC for open ID connect. Then we'll go here, we refresh this. And now we can see it's changed the login screen because it now thinks that we use an open ID connect. And during that process, we didn't need to restart the container or anything. The value was used right away. Now I want to talk about log files. Now log files can be really helpful when you come across errors to provide further details so you can find out what the error actually is caused by. And luckily with the Linux server Docker setup, you typically will have everything that you need to diagnose issues. So we're going to look within the container files that we get mapped out on the volume that we've mounted. So again, I've mounted that config folder to the local folder app data. So we can dive into there. And within the www folder, you'll find everything related to Bookstack itself. Then within here, you'll find a laravel.log file and that contains all errors that come from Bookstack itself. So we can see here, if I expand this out a little bit more, that this is uh, where I typed a command wrong earlier. If you ever come across an error that's reported within Bookstack itself and has Bookstack branding across it, or you see a view where it says an error has occurred, then this is the file to look at for more information. And ideally you wanna have a look at the time that's provided for the error log detail within here and see if you can match that up to when you saw the error occur. So you can be sure that you're looking at the right log data for the error that you've actually come across. But another place to look is at the web server logs. So if we collapse this, but instead go to log, then nginx, then we can see an error and access.log files. If we go into the error log file, then we can see a similar thing, And but these are errors directly from the web server. So quite commonly, if you see errors that look very bland, it's just black and white page with a very simplistic message, you might instead want to have a look at this error.log file and see if there's something around the same timestamp as you saw the error to see if you can get more detail about what's going on. And then the access.log file, while it's not detailing errors, this can be really useful to see requests coming into your instance. So I point people to this file quite a lot in debugging when they're diagnosing an issue where they can't connect to their Bookstack instance. If you're not seeing any messages logged in this file when you're trying to connect to your instance, then it means your network requests aren't even reaching the container itself or the web server within the container. So the issue might be further along the chain. So maybe at your firewall, or maybe there's an issue with your systems networking. Now we come on to backing up your Bookstack instance. Now, because we're mounting these volume folders onto our host system, then these really have all the essential data that's used for the operational content of Bookstack. So we've got all the database data will be in there and all the app data, including uploaded images, 
our .env file that we saw earlier and uploaded attachments, that should all be within there unless you're specifically putting that elsewhere. So we could just copy those folders to a safe place. Ideally, we'd stop all the containers first before doing that to make sure the files are in a stable state. But one thing that I think it's really good to do is create a database dump. And by doing that, we ensure our data is generally in a much more portable, safe format because the database files themselves are very specific to that specific database engine and that specific database version. You can kind of get issues if you're, for example, wanting to restore that into a different environment that might have variation within the database that's being used. So yeah, I'd always recommend a database dump as part of this backup process. And that's what we'll do first. So this doesn't actually involve the Bookstack container itself. We'll do this directly within the Bookstack database container, which is this one here. And we're using, as per the Linux server instructions, their own Linux server MariaDB image. And we can create a database dump like so. We're going to do docker compose exec, kind of like we did earlier. But this time we want to target the bookstack underscore db container. And now the command that we're going to run, we're going to run mysql dump. And then as dash u for the user, and we're going to go root and then dash p for the password. And then we've got that over here to find his root pass. So then we just type that in right next to this option. And then we need to put the database name, which here is bookstack app. And if I was to run this right now, which I'll do, you'll see this puts everything out onto the command line. So this is all of our data, but it's just put in the terminal. But if I press up to get that command back, and what I'll do, I'll just clear the screen. So I've got that command back to where it was, and then I'll do an arrow to redirect the output. And I'm going to put that locally to a, let's say, data.sql file. And now because I'm within this path, which is where my Docker Compose exists on this terminal, that's where this data file is also going to be stored. So if I run that, and now I can see here, I've got a data.sql file. If I have a look at that, this is all of the data for my Bookstack instance as raw SQL. One thing to note is that using an arrow like that will overwrite any existing files. It won't ask you, so just be a bit careful. Make sure that you're writing out to a new file that doesn't already exist and won't cause any harm. Right now that we've got that database dump, what we could do is maybe just zip everything up into a compressed archive just so that we have all of our files required in one compressed zip archive. And we'll do that with the tar command. So we'll go tar compress zip, very important files. And then we specify what this zipped archive is going to be called. So we'll call this like bookstack backup. It's usually a good idea to maybe put the date in here. So I think 2023 02 20.tar.gz because that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a tar.gzip file. And then we provide everything that's going to be part of this. So we'll put the app data directory, db data directory, and the data.sql. Now it's saying exiting with failure status due to previous errors. So I think just had to peek up and that is going to be due to permission errors. And also I forgot to do something. I forgot to stop our Docker containers. So I'm going to do that. Docker compose. And then I'm just going to bring everything down. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit up a couple of times to get back that old zip command. And now I'm going to run this with sudo to give us permissions to access all files in the system so that we've got permission to back up everything within there. Cool. And there we go. No errors that time. And if we have a look here, we have our bookstack backup tar.gzip file. And that's everything all backed up and safe. But of course, before that's safe, you want to move that to a completely different machine. Because if the whole system goes down or you make an error running a command and accidentally delete that file, then you've lost your backup. So copy that to a different instance and just make sure all that data is nice and safe. But with that done, we can move on to updating our bookstack instance. Now, again, even though we just went through it, just for those that are jumping to this point in the video, make sure that you have a backup before updating. This is where most issues will occur because on some updates, there will need to be changes to the database, which is quite a risky thing. So make sure you have a backup before you go through this process. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to advise is to go to the Bookstack updates documentation, which looks like this. But although most of these instructions don't really apply to us, because the container system will do most of this for us, I do think it's important to go down a little bit and review the version specific instructions, which shows any breaking changes or any security notices or different versions of Bookstack that you might be updating through. 
But in my case, all of that looks fine, so I'm going to crack on. Now I'm going to go to my Docker Compose setup. And as I mentioned earlier, I've put on this tag to use an old version of the Bookstack container. And I'm going to update this to latest, which is what I imagine many of you might have, because that is the default provided in the documentation and indicates that you kind of want to be on the latest version of Bookstack. Now back on the command line, we'll go and run some Docker Compose commands. So Docker Compose. And then the first thing I'm going to do is pull. And that will pull down any of the container images that I need that I don't already have on the system. So by doing latest as well, this should look up for the latest version of the Bookstack Linux server container image and it will pull that down for use when you next go up, which is what we'll do now. So that's all pulled down. And do a Docker Compose up. And that looks like it's starting quite nicely. So this is quite a typical output of what you're going to see. And one thing to note is that the first set of logs are the most important logs. So if anything goes wrong during this process, make sure that you, instead of before like trying to restart it or anything, you look at the Docker logs and you find and store the Docker log output for the books that container just for safekeeping. Uh, if you need to report the error or get support, it's really important that you get the first set of logs. So for us, those are here. Although if, for example, you were running Docker in the background and that you didn't see these straight away, you can also do Docker compose logs like that. And you see the log output there. But yeah, everything that we can see in the logs here is absolutely fine. This is all kind of expected. We can see there's a couple of database migrations. So there were some changes to be made to the database. If you do get any errors in this process, they're usually quite visible within here. So it'll be a whole bunch of added text within here. It should say something along the lines of an error has occurred or an exception has occurred, something along those lines. And it'll often show like a lot of different file locations as well within that. But this has all gone very smoothly because I just brought down my Docker Compose setup. I'm just going to re-up that. And by adding the dash D flag, that runs the Docker Compose stack in the background. But now let's check that we're updated. So we're on version 22.10 before. I jump over to my instance. I'll go to the settings page. Oh, we need to log in. And now on the settings page, you can see we're on 23.01.1, which is the latest at the time of recording. So that's all it takes. It's usually a quite a nice, simple process. As I said, just make sure you've got a backup just in case anything goes wrong. But otherwise, it should be a fairly painless process. Now, the last thing to go through is restoring. So we created our backup earlier. But what if everything went wrong and we need to restore from our backup? Let's go through that process. So to start, I'm just going to clear the terminal and I'm going to stop our Docker setup. And then I'm going to remove the containers. Now, normally this is absolutely fine because we've got our data mounted correctly using volumes. So if we just brought back up the stack, everything should be fine. But what I'm also going to do is that I'm going to delete that those data volumes. RM, RF. I'll do this with sudo because there might be permission stuff at play. And remove all that app data. Again, this is a destructive thing. I'm just doing this for the demonstration process of all of our files going missing. And then I'll do all the database data as well. And then I'm going to remove just that data.sql file. And now we're just left with two things, our Docker Compose file and our Bookstack backup from earlier. So with those mounted volumes gone, if we were to bring up a Docker Compose stack right now, we'd end up with a completely fresh instance, which would be no good. We want our data there. So let's go through the process of restoring our data. So we've got our zipped backup that we created earlier. Let's first unzip that and get our folders back. So we go tar, then x, z, f, v, f. And then we will specify the, the zipped archive that we want to restore. And let's run that. And there we go. It's now restored. We've got back our data.sql and our two folders. Now, when it comes to unzipping like that, this is unzipping into this directory because this is where that folder was located. And when we zipped everything, all of those files were zipped relatively. You could end up in a bit of a funky scenario if you did things a bit differently, where these would be extracted now somewhere a bit different, or you might have a large folder chain to traverse. But you should still have these files within there. But you'll just need to find those folders and then put them back into where the correct location relative to the Docker Compose, or at least where these volumes are pointing to. But with that archive extracted, what we could do is just do docker compose up. And then we'll go back into our browser, refresh this, and we've got an up instance. If I log in, 
and I'll go back home and then we've still got our content. There's the cat image, here's the page that we created, everything's absolutely fine. Now this restore went relatively easy because a lot of the things are the same. We're using the same database container version, for instance, and there was no issues with any of the database files that we had backed up within this DB data directory. But what I want to do is simulate a kind of a worse scenario as if we didn't have this DB data here or if it was corrupt, for example. So I'm going to stop this Docker Compose setup and what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the db underscore data directory, just so we have no local database data. And then I'm going to start that container from scratch and we're going to use our database dump file that we created earlier to restore the database content instead. So we've got the database or the bookstack db container defined within here. What we'll do, we'll start just this container. And this is really quite important and the order of these steps is quite important as well. We need to make sure that we start just the container so that we can restore our old data before we ever start the bookstack container that's going to link in with the database. This is particularly important when you're maybe changing across bookstack versions, which we're doing here because our database backup is from the 22.10 version of bookstack and we're jumping forward to the latest version of bookstack. So it's really essential that we start up the database in an empty state, then restore our data and then start the bookstack container. Because if we started it all up, restored our database data and then restarted everything, we'd likely get errors as it tries to upgrade our old database data, but there might already be some new tables in there from when Bookstack started before. So let's proceed and just start the Bookstack DB container. Do Docker compose up and then we can define here Bookstack underscore DB, to just start that one. And I'm gonna do the dash D flag to start it in the background. There we go, it started just that container. And we can also see it created that DB data directory. But obviously that won't have all of the bookstack data that we that we had before. And now that our database container has started and we've got that DB data directory, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy a data.sql file into that DB data directory. And that way it's part of that mapped volume directory. So we'll have access to that within the container. So I'm going to copy that to, in this case, DB underscore data and then data.sql. So that now exists just there. Now to make use of that data file that we just put in DB data, we can now restore it, but we need to go into the database container to go through that process. So similar to how we did earlier, we can do docker compose exec, and this time we want to do bookstack underscore DB, and then we'll do slash bin slash bash. And now we're inside the container. And now in here, if we run mysql mysu root, so the root user dash p and now we want to do the root password which we can get over here so that's root pass now the database name that we want to use which we look to our compose it's here bookstack app and then we want to read in data using a left arrow like that from slash config and then within there we should have the data.sql file like that so if I run this command, cool, no errors, which is good. And now our data should be back within the database. And now what I could do is verify that, but if I press up to get that command back and then remove the slash config slash data and the arrow, then that puts me into MySQL or the MariaDB command line. Then I can do show tables, uh, semicolon, and I'll see all the tables there, and that looks like all the books that database tables. Cool. So I'll type exit and hit enter, do quit out of there, and then I'll quit out of the command line within the Docker container by using exit again. And there we go. So that should be our data restored from a database dump file. So now if I bring everything up, we should be good to go. Now our database is already up, but I think we can just do Docker Compose up, and that will just bring everything up that's not already up. And there we go. So that started our Bookstack container. We can see it done a couple of migrations. Again, where the versions have changed, there's database changes to be made. And I'll jump over to my Bookstack instance and I'll refresh. Cool, and it's still alive and running. Yeah, that's still there. If I, let's open that up. And you can see that attachment file is still there as well. So everything is all good. Everything's all safe. And we've successfully restored our instance.
Now, if you have any issues along this process, and particularly when you start the container and see errors there, what could occur is that your database credentials are no longer aligned. So you might have set up a new Docker Compose file separately from your original ones that has different users or credentials for the database. So in that scenario, if you created a database from fresh, so you didn't have the original database files at all, and you're starting up a new instance has to restore a database dump, then what you want to do is have a look at these details, make sure this database user and password aligns correctly across these values for the books that container up here. Make sure this user database and password matches those values. So update these ones. And then if you've already also started your books that container and gotten that error, also have a look at the .env file like we saw earlier. So within your books that data, www and the .env file and do the same here. So for these details here, make sure these values are aligned. Then once you've made sure they're all correct and all the same, then bring everything down, bring everything back up and hopefully you should be good to go. Another consideration about restore or migration is if your URL is changing, which can be quite common if you're maybe migrating to a different server that has a domain name. So some things to look out for there is that one, you want to double check this app URL value. Again, you might want to check it in the .env file as well, where it's here, but you want to update this to be the root base URL for your book stack instance. So if I was having, for example, docs.example.com, then I didn't have a port on it because I was hosting it as a proper site, I'd have it looking like that. Or if I was putting maybe something in front of it to add HTTPS, I'll update it to be HTTPS as well. So that's one thing to change. And then by setting that on the environment of the Docker Compose setup, I think the Linux server image takes that into account. So if I stop this and I'll bring that back up now that we've changed that, we can see some log output here that app URL is being updated from localhost 6875, which is what it was, to uh, docs.example.com which is the exact change that we intended to make. So the Linux server Docker image has noticed this and is making an advisory based off of that change saying to also run this command. So it's helpfully providing us this. And this is very similar to what we did earlier in the running command section of this video, where we went inside the books that contain and ran a command. This is just another way of doing that. Again, is this is just a simple PHP artisan command. But all it's advising you to do is to, if we have a look at the book stack documentation, we'll go to commands, and then update system URL is advising you to run this command. And what this does is updates any URL references within the database content from your old URL to your new URL, just so there's not any kind of old bad links within your Bookstack content itself. But otherwise, that's our Bookstack instance restored from a backup, including a database dump, and it's up and running on the latest version. So yeah, that's everything that I've got to cover. I hope this video was really useful. If there's anything that you're trying to do that I've maybe missed in this video, feel free to comment below or jump into our Discord server. But that's everything for this video, so thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.